Learn the secrets of success. Exclusive insights and information from the experts. Tag Radio. Ready to let your mind go wherever technology leads? Then tag, you're it. Tag Radio. Here today. Imagine tomorrow. More than 6 million people have visited the Georgia Aquarium in its first 22 months of operation alone. The world's largest aquarium with more than 8 million gallons of water in various habitats. A $250 million gift to the state of Georgia from Bernie Marcus, co-founder of the Home Depot. The aquarium employs hundreds of full-time and part-time employees, plus some 1,000 volunteers. Home to more aquatic life than found in any other aquarium in the world, the facility contains a state-of-the-art animal health care facility for more than 10,000 square feet, the only integration of an aquarium and veterinarian teaching hospital in the industry. Enough pipe to more than encircle the entire city of Atlanta on I-285 loop, over 61 miles, and a cooling capacity from an air conditioning system equivalent to a 50-story, 1 million square foot office building or 1,200 average size homes. In fact, approximately 230 newly constructed average size American homes can fit inside the aquarium with room to spare. 235 pumps move 275,000 gallons of water per month through the habitats. And for the inhabitants, 572,000 pounds of fish and seafood are prepared every year. And of course, for visitors and guests, over 16,000 square foot of ballroom seating for over 1,000 guests and enough space throughout the facility to host functions for more than 7,000 people. Greetings, everyone. It's Tuesday, October 16th, 2007, and this is Tech Talk with the Technology Association of Georgia President, Tino Mantella. In this edition, Tino dives into the ocean of technology behind the world's largest aquarium as we meet Beach M. Clark, Jr., Vice President, Information Technology for the Georgia Aquarium. Beach joined the team at the aquarium in July of 2004, over a year before the facility's grand opening, when vision, leadership, and innovation were the only hard assets in place for this world-class facility. Today, Beach oversees point-of-sale, telecommunications, and overall management of the aquarium's website and databases. A former Home Depot exec, Beach designed and implemented the retail company's network architecture and managed networking, application development, and tech support for this huge home remodeling super chain. Listen, as Tino and Beach take you beneath the surface of the spectacular tanks and architecture of the Georgia Aquarium into the technology that's making waves around the world by this one-of-a-kind facility. Beach, thank you for joining me on Tech Talk. Glad to be able to do it, Tino. You know, I think uh, some of our listeners will be wondering why we're interviewing uh, a leader from the aquarium in regards to uh, cutting-edge technology, but uh, you guys uh, are uh, part of our Excalibur Award program coming up tomorrow, actually, and uh, we uh, see that you're doing an awful lot in technology. So I guess I'd like to start by saying, what kind of technology do fish need? Well, they certainly don't need... Internet Explorer to uh, buy stuff on eBay, right. <laughs> but but they do need a a, a good, safe, uh, clean place to live. Uh, if you think about fish, you know their their environment is the water, and if the water you know gets dirty, they can't do like we do and just move somewhere else. Right. So uh, we have to keep that clean. Um, there's a extensive life support system uh, dedicated to doing that, to making sure that those 294 pumps. I'm sorry, 235 pumps run cleanly and smoothly uh, all the time. We have a pretty limited life support staff, so they rely on automation to let them know when anything gets um, even a degree of temperature in the water or uh, any of the um, oxygen-related uh, numbers get a little bit off. They get, a, they get an alert via their cell phone to let them know that something needs attention. And as far as the people go, we also have to keep track of all the animals. So we have an animal record system that helps them keep track of uh, the animals and their uh, medical records. Is there any uh, kind of RFID related to that, or is that not really what you guys are doing? <laughs> we had, it's funny. We, had, we actually talked about that, but, you know, it's, it's living fish. Yeah. Um, there has been some uh, – there actually have been some – 
uh, RFID uh, devices implanted in the fish, but it's a, it's a bit of a challenge with um, the volume of water that we have, over 6 million gallons in our largest tank. Right, right. Well, um, on the other side of the coin, so we're taking care of the fish. How about the people that come in and use the aquarium? What, what sort of special technology are you uh, applying for the guests? Well, we have some very specialized technology. Uh, one, of the, one of the items that gets probably the best reviews is our, uh, our touch wall, our fish ID touch wall inside our Ocean Voyager gallery. That, it's a, it's a, a 20 foot by a 6 foot wall that's a, just a giant touch screen that allows guests to touch a fish that they're interested in and then the, the wall gives them some interesting facts about the fish. We also have fish identification kiosks in two of our galleries that allow, once again, uh, guests to touch the kiosk and find out, um, you know, what uh, more information about a fish that they might be interested in. And we also have a, um, our version of the Olympic Brick Program. We call it Fish Scales, and um, all the fish scales are on a, on a, a wall inside the aquarium. There are 35,000 of them. And so we have a locator application that kind of is a fun way to allow them, to allow someone to find their fish scale, kind of a little different than how you do it in Centennial Olympic Park, where you kind of walk all over. Find there's your a, brick, right? Yeah, there's a there's a pulsing uh, light that kind of goes right to your fish scale and tells you where it is. And that's part of Play Motion Technology, right? Which is a Georgia-based company, I think. That's right. It was um, it was designed and implemented by Play Motion, who's a a local company here in it, in Atlanta, and uh, they've done some really creative things. Um, there's a, actually a, a, a video that plays on LED lights behind the fish scales, too, to make it more fun to look at. I imagine, like uh, any uh, top corporation, uh, the CIO for the aquarium is always on the hunt for uh, technology. You know, the Excalibur Awards... Uh, talk about the unique partnership between the uh, producers of technology and the buyers of technology. So how do you work that? I'm sure some of our technology listeners uh, would like to know how you make decisions about uh, utilization of technology. Well, <clears throat> you know, we, we like to start with um, keeping the guest in mind. So everything kind of works back from there. You know, how can we need to basically stay connected with our guests? Uh, that doesn't mean that every single thing we do um, you know, ultimately our guests would see explicitly, but we like to think about how, how they, how it benefits the guest. Um, and we use, you know, we use a lot of local, uh, local companies. Um, we rely on third parties quite a bit for, uh, technology implementation and maintenance. Um, and, and so, you know, we have, uh, contacts here, here in Atlanta and, um, you know, regionally too. And um, if we looked over, say, the past year or so, how, how, if, how would you describe how technology has helped the aquarium uh, most over that past uh, year? Well, I would say in our first year, um, crowd control was a, a, a very important aspect of our, you know, operations with, with record crowds that were actually more than 50% of what we originally estimated. We wanted to make sure that with large crowds like that that we could, you know, handle as many people as possible through the building and still have it be a good experience for everyone. So we implemented systems to really um, allow only a certain number of people to come in each hour. We coupled that with our online ticketing reservation system that allows people to reserve a slot in one of the hours, especially the hours, you know, on Saturday and Sunday when we're the busiest and during the holidays like spring break when we're the busiest. Um, so the guests could come to the website, reserve an hour that they'd be able to come in, and then, you know, be able to come in without having to stand in a, in a long line. Um, and that helped, you know, again, helped the aquarium. Um, it helped the, our guests know when was a good time to come. And in a, lot of, in a lot of cases, you know, guests were able to pick a different time and come a little earlier, maybe a little later, later in the afternoon when it wasn't, when it wasn't going to be um, crowded. So that's probably the main thing. We also did a fair amount of uh, online fund fundraising. I'll go back to our fish scales application. We um, we sold all of our fish scales online. So wow. um, you know, having that ab ability to sell that online before the before the aquarium was really open, 
and kind of make, create a connection between uh, the aquarium and the people of Atlanta um, for whom the, the aquarium was a gift from Bernie Marcus. It seems like uh, being a nonprofit myself for over 20 years that um, you had the luxury and the aquarium really did it right in terms of bringing on the team, uh, you know, before, well before the aquarium was, was open. So technology, uh, I'm assuming, and let me know if I'm correct, was not an afterthought, but it was actually really an integral part of your early uh, development. Absolutely. It began with, uh, you know, with the overall project management of the building of the aquarium was a, a technology um, track that went with that. Um, Erie uh, was the overall project manager, and they hired Accenture to help with uh, help with all the technology implementation. Um, and there were over 22 technology projects on the overall uh, project schedule. Even with all that, I got to be honest with you, it was pretty hectic there at the end. With um, with uh, you know, we kind of opened up with the Today Show right. and Matt Lauer and our swimming in our tanks and all that kind of stuff. It was a, it was a very hectic time, but uh, but we definitely plan for the technology uh, well in advance. Now there are, uh, maybe you can help me with the number, but uh, I know there are uh, several major aquariums around the nation. Uh, would you say that you're in a position now uh, in terms of best practice and technology to get a lot of visits from the other folks around the country? We actually, um, uh, interesting you should ask, we actually hosted a, a, an IT conference of all the zoo and aquarium um, IT executives uh, last week. Um, our sponsors, Radiant and Microsoft, kind of helped out with that. And um, so we have a chance to do a lot of a lot of benchmarking. There are, you know, 38 aquariums in, in the United States and um, probably five or six major ones. And uh, I know all the, the leaders, and we, you know, uh, trade best practices and ideas about technology uh, on a regular basis. Switching gears a bit, um, and probably we wouldn't ask this question two months ago because it wasn't on top of mind, certainly for me and, and uh, lots of uh, Atlantans, but uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the water crisis, uh, how is that affecting the aquarium, if at all, and are the technologies helping in terms of efficiencies? Well, um, certainly uh, the technology helps us uh, use as little water as possible. <clears throat> we've, you know, we've uh, turned off all of the, the water features and all that kind of stuff that uh -huh. don't really affect uh, animal safety to, you know, try to at least symbolically uh, indicate that we're, you know, we're very on board and we understand the, uh, you know, the difficult time that Atlanta's going through with its water. Uh, the fish have to have safe, clean water. So. Right. Uh, we're just being as efficient as we can with that. Anything uh, in, back to technology in the future, any uh, big plans in mind for uh, some new bells and whistles coming up in the next year? Well, um, it's interesting. We uh, this morning announced the launch of a Seafood Savvy portion of our website, which will direct guests um, to information about eating the right kind of seafood. Um, and we'll actually, there'll be a, a cell phone version of that, so if you're in a restaurant, you can dial a number, and, and uh, uh, basically, I'm sorry, you'll have to have, uh, if you have a web-enabled phone, you can mm -hmm. uh, hit our uh, specially designed website and ask your waiter lots of questions about what the, what the best kind of uh, seafood is to eat. Oh, you know, a lot of people enjoy doing that, and I think a lot more people are concerned about their own health and the, and the environment. You know, there's a, a movement, we're starting to look at it as well here uh, in this whole spirit of Web 2.0, or some people are now saying Web 3.0, but this whole social networking and uh, collaborative community, you know, building community uh, with your online uh, stakeholders. Um, have you guys made any advancement in that area, or is it something you're talking about in terms of how to get uh, members and participants more engaged with uh, uh, pushing information to you versus just being the recipient of it. Tina, we're uh, we're obviously aware of that, and it's sort of in the research and development stage. We'll have something in the next uh, month or two that I can't. I really don't want to talk about okay. until we actually deliver it. Um, but absolutely, and we're um, you know we're identifying. We've done a lot of work with kind of trying to find out. Um, who our guests are, why they enjoy the aquarium, and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's, you know, that's the key thing is knowing what what can we do 
that will be enjoyable for our guests, just like when they're here. And so we're working on that. Well, very good. Maybe we'll uh, interview you in a few months and get the scoop on that. But uh, we've been talking with Beach Clark today on uh, Tech Talk. Uh, Beach, uh, congratulations on being an Excalibur Award finalist, and uh, look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, and thanks for joining me on Tech Talk. Thanks for having me, Tino.